Copyright trolls are ruining YouTube. Not only is the video transformative because we made edits to it, but it's literally me. It's me talking to Andrew Tate. These corporate mercenaries don't seem to believe in a little thing called fair use. And because some of the biggest players on these platforms have hired them, they've been able to do a lot of damage. Now, not only is this messed up, but it's also illegal in many countries. So the question is, will YouTube do anything to stop this? And can they? So for a while, this mysterious company was sending copyright claims to anyone that covered popular YouTubers like iShowSpeed. This meant losing the ad money from the video itself, which in some cases was multiple millions of views, or instead risking a copyright strike by fighting the claim in court. So these claim notifications did point to a company name. But when people looked it up, there wasn't that much to figure out. So the riddle's only clue might be the thing that you remember from when this whole issue resurfaced earlier this year, Thumb Media. But let's just take a look at this recent tweet from Feudus so that we can, you know, examine how one of these claims actually works. And this one is from Thumb Media. A video of Feudus 2 v 2 Aiden Ross was copyright claimed by Thumb Media Affiliate. So a copyright claim like this means that the video stays up. It's just that whoever claimed the copyright just takes the money from the video in question. So if you want to contest the claim, you can, and there are absolutely valid reasons in a legal sense to use content that originated elsewhere in your own video. Ultimately, YouTube is not the one making the call on these claims. What happens is there's a process for them to communicate the claim between the two parties, and then at a certain point, it's on the person making the claim to actually sue the person that they claim is infringing on the copyright. So so people like Feudives are dealing with this issue now and they're in a tough spot because if they choose to contest this thing, they have to give their personal details to the claimant so that they can be served a lawsuit if they so choose. So you can see for all of the above reasons why people don't want to contest these things. Lawsuits are expensive and inconvenient and you're risking serious damage to your channel if you do contest it and you get a copyright strike that stays on your account permanently and again, could endanger it in the future. In Feudus' case, they were lucky enough to be able to get the claim rescinded shortly after tweeting about the whole thing, but ultimately it shows that it's still happening. And it doesn't look like any of this was an accident either. As YouTuber Jabroni pointed out in March, these don't look like automated claims. It actually appears as if somebody is just searching words like like I Show Speed or Aiden Ross, going to videos that contain any amount of those things and claiming the copyright for them. Usually when you get claimed on YouTube, it's by an automated system, it's by content ID. The copyright owner gets a list of videos that are using the content that they claim to own. They can just go through a checkbox and say, claim, claim, claim. It's all on one screen. The claims we were getting last summer were manual claims, which means somebody was going to our videos and manually clicking the claim this video button. So this thing hit a fever pitch back in March around the time that Jabroni made that video that I just showed you. And in that situation, a lot of the uncertainty was just around who are Thumb Media really? What's going on? Were these claims actually made on behalf of iShowSpeed and Aiden Ross, or was this some other kind of trolling, like in the past when people had re-uploaded old videos, but then claimed the original was infringing on the copyright? In the past, Speed's fans tried to talk to him about what was happening with Thumb Media. Was this actually him? What was going on, really? And he gave them pretty much a non-answer the first time. Company call of Omni is copyright strike and audit. Chat, how do I like chat? How do I stop this from happening? Like, cause it's not happening to me. But about three months ago, Speed came out and made a video where he admitted, yeah, Thumb Media is working for me and please stop sending YouTube emails about it. YouTube asks y'all to stop spamming about these emails uh, about the cardigan and the Thumb Media affiliate. That is me. I wanted to let y'all know, everybody know that. So, with y'all guys, please stop. Thank y'all. So Speed was either ashamed of what he was doing and was hoping to kind of stay in the background here, or he believed that it was very possible that Thumb Media would just continue to take the heat for him into the foreseeable future. But Aiden Ross, on the other hand, didn't do that. Instead, he boasted about using claims and strikes to his own personal advantage. W, chat, by the way, this is um Hassan's head moderator, chat. Put a W. 
I don't know who this person is. I've never met this person. This person is not my head moderator. Chat, we stole $8,000 from him. W, he needed that. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yes! And he also went after Hassan for footage that included Hassan debating Andrew Tate. Like Hassan was literally in the video. Cause like here, I destroyed Andrew Tate featuring Aiden Ross and Hassan. It's the same exact video, but on XQC's channel, it's like copy striking this. You know what I mean? If he has ownership over this entire call, which he doesn't, he would have to copy strike XQC as well, which he can't, but it's the exact same thing. There are these recent examples, sure. But if you go back, you could find some pretty old Reddit posts about Thumb Media as well. So this thing's been going on for a little while. It's not a new problem, but it is starting to become more mainstream and there's more awareness of it. And even though I talked about Thumb Media and Cardigan in some of these previous cases, they aren't the only people who are going around claiming videos. Getting falsely copyright striked by some group named Create Network MGD, they go around claiming content that isn't theirs, reject any appeals, and steal the revenue from the videos. I am quite literally powerless to this form of theft because YouTube won't protect its creator. Turns out I'm not the only victim of this copyright abuse. So why do these claims continue to happen? Listen, I'm sure some of the videos claimed probably wouldn't meet a rigorous fair use definition in court or something. Like if you're just stitching together clips, I think that's certainly a gray area. And if there's no other transformation that could make a court battle pretty hard. However, I'm not a lawyer, so. Yeah, so many of the videos that were claimed were attempting to transform that content through narrative or commentary that there's no way it could be considered a replacement for the original source material. And even if we accept that it's likely that most of these copyright trolls will simply release the claims before going to court, that's still clearly an attempt at intimidation. People are protective of their channels. They see them as potentially a future way to make a living. So threatening them directly like that, a lot of people will just say, I don't wanna fight this claim, it's easier not to. I also wanna mention that in many jurisdictions, what they're doing is illegal. It's just that it's pretty hard to get them to face justice for these sorts of things. In the United States, false copyright claims are a criminal offense that sadly only carries a penalty of $2,500 per claim. Even if the government decides that there's a problem on YouTube, which seems unlikely without YouTube itself advocating for some kind of help, it's hard to see how they would collect and sort through all of these claims with what they currently have. Now, as far as I can tell, YouTube is following existing law about how to handle copyright claims. The problem is that there are people who are clearly acting in bad faith. So YouTube could act to censure those entities if they wanted to. In some cases, they've taken direct action against accounts that repeatedly issued false strikes like they did against Christopher Brady in 2019. In that case though, it was alleged that Brady tried to extort channels with the threat of a third strike and he confessed to making false strikes as part of the settlement. Still, Brady did have to do a lot, including issuing strikes, not claims, to get YouTube to actually take action. Because the case was settled and it wasn't part of the statement, the alleged extortion part of the scheme remains unproven in a court of law. But despite YouTube being generally slow to act on the copyright claims trolls, some people have tried to take action. The Electronic Frontier Foundation is a nonprofit organization that has long supported the fight against copyright trolls on the internet. They've even briefed the US House Judiciary about this press issue and about legislation that would make it even easier for these trolls to operate, which they don't want. In 2017, H3H3 Productions successfully fought off a lawsuit from Bold Guy, aka Matt Hawzone, after the latter attempted to sue H3 over a parody video that they had made. Through all the grief, all the, all the drama, man, now I'm so happy we did it. Because this is a landmark case, not just for us, but seriously, the wording that the judge put into the opinion uh, is gonna strengthen fair use across YouTube. The process took a year and a half, 
a lot of money and frankly it's not something that every youtube channel would be able to do h3 are pretty big but they did fight this thing to the end and critically got a judgment that reinforced fair use as an idea on youtube any review of the Klein's video leaves no doubt that it constitutes critical commentary on Haas's video. There is also no doubt that the Klein's video is decidedly not a market substitute for Haas's video. For these and the other reasons set forth below, defendants' use of the clips from the Haas video constitute fair use as a matter of law. Oh, that makes me rock hard, dude. I am fully chub. Why am I talking about this? It's not exactly like Bold Guy or whatever was a copyright troll, although he did use the system in this case to try and get a desired outcome. Okay, well, the reason I'm talking about it is because these copyright trolls probably understand that actually taking this thing to court is going to be difficult in many, many cases. But these companies like Thumb Media can simply push the dispute until it's absolutely the last moment to start legal action and then just drop it, which is what happened to Jabroni and Omni too. After reviewing your dispute, Thumb Media Affiliate has decided to release their copyright claim on your YouTube video. Oh my God, I was so relieved. And I felt like the weight of the world was like taken off of my ass. We found out that this claim is invalid and have already taken appropriate action on the relevant reference. The claim should be released in the next 48 hours. And even if it seems likely these companies will back down at the last moment, it's still unsettling to have someone try to intimidate you this way. If a video was doing really well, it's also keeping the channel from collecting the proceeds throughout the entire dispute. So what else can be done? Unless YouTube makes some change to de-incentivize companies from doing this, I'm sure it will keep happening. In fact, I'm sure for every case that we hear about on Twitter or Reddit or something, there's probably 29 of them where somebody just said, okay, fine, I'll just let the claim go. I, it's not worth it to me. So this business model is probably working for people. I don't know if YouTube ultimately only cares about the highest profile cases, or maybe that's all they have resources to really address. I'm not sure. But their position in market terms is pretty dominant right now. However, that can change. I really like the YouTube platform, but if we're going to let powerful people trample up and coming creators using intimidation tactics like this, Maybe the dominance of YouTube does deserve to change a bit. Yeah, so I was late for the shoot this morning. I'm not kidding. I know some of you in the comments are gonna be like, that's bullshit, Josh. But I'm not kidding. The reason was I was taking my kids to school, well, to, to daycare, and I saw an old woman trying to put a harness on a dog and the dog just ran away. And I was like, are you gonna be, you gonna be good to get that dog? And she literally said, I don't know, it's pretty fast. It went about, the dog went about two blocks, I would say. And my kid, like my oldest kid, like walked right up to it, like Druid style. And was just like, the dog was so chill. And the woman said that the dog was friendly and stuff. And so I was like, okay, okay. And then I, she had like kind of stopped the dog. The dog was tired. She was like right next to it. And I grabbed the collar and it was like, bro, nah. I think it was just startled. It, it didn't really try to hurt me, but yeah. It was, a, it was a fun morning and I was like 15 minutes late for my shoot and I helped the dog and I helped the old woman, so. And maybe I shouldn't say old. She was just, she was just, a, she was an elder, you know? She was a distinguished elder. She wasn't an old woman.